everyone, it's Jenny from jccards.com and I'm so happy to be joining you today as part of the Save the Crafty YouTuber video hop. This is a five day hop that has been put together by Justine Hovey and she has more details about the hop and why we're doing it over on her blog. I provided the link to her blog in the video description below as well as the next stop on the hop. We have tons of crafty prizes available to people who comment. The more times you comment on each of the stops on the videos across the five days, the more chances you have to win. Please make sure you note in your comments due to physical restrictions on some of the prizes, whether you're international or US based. And with that, let's get to the project that I'm showing you today. I call it double embossing. It combines dry embossing using embossing folders and heat embossing using embossing powder, all to create one background. I'm going to show you four examples here, but for all of the examples I'm going to show you, you'll need embossing folders, embossing powder, embossing ink, such as Versamark, a powder bag to prevent your embossing powder sticking where you don't want it, and some good quality cardstock. I'm using black, white, grey, and I'm also here, I'm using watercolour cold press cardstock. The first thing you'll want to do is ensure that your card panel is treated with your powder bag. That removes any of the static and stops your embossing powder sticking where you don't want it. You're then going to apply your embossing ink directly onto your embossing folder. You can apply it to either side of the embossing folder. Depending on which side you apply it to, you will get a different look when you eventually do heat emboss this. Just be careful that when you're applying it, you gently tap rather than pushing down heavily. And that way you'll get more of a crisper image when you heat emboss the pattern. I carefully placed my cardstock with the treated powder side facing the Versamark inked up side of the embossing folder, closed the folder and I ran it through my die cutting machine. Because this was a thick 3D folder, I actually could only get in the machine a paper shim, so that's why you saw the paper when I was running it through. For this technique, we're going to be doing a watercolour re embossed resist. So I'm using white embossing powder here. You could, of course, use any colour of embossing powder you like, but I thought white would look pretty cool here. I've taped down the panel to my glass mat with some masking tape, spritzed it quite heavily with water, and then I'm gently tapping over some shimmer powder by Nuvo in Violet Brocade. I'm actually only using the one colour here, but you'll see as I add more with my Distress Sprayer, you'll see different colours appearing. And I just think these work really great with Emboss Resist, and I love using them particularly with embossing folders because the watercolour forms around the outlines of the embossing but also of the dry embossing as well and you get some great effects. I'm mopping up where I've added a little bit too much water or there was a little bit too much paint just to get the effect I like and then I'm going to save it and let it dry. This is the finished card. I trimmed it down to an A2 size card panel. I used a smile die by Catherine Pooler which I stacked five times and then added some Nuvo uh, crystal glaze over the top and a sentiment by Alter New which is from the Needlework Motifs stamp set. So I'm going to show you that technique again. This time I'm not using a 3D embossing folder and I'm using some black cardstock. This is Midnight Cardstock by Catherine Pooler. And I've added the Versamark ink again directly onto the embossing folder and I'm gently tapping it. I can't re-emphasize enough how much you need to just gently tap it. I'm now using Nouveau Embossing Powder in Silver Moonlight which is a really pretty shimmery glitter silver which shows up really great against the black cardstock. And I'm adding this over the entire card panel and heat embossing it again. What you'll see is it's the areas on the embossing in the embossed image that are depressions where you get the embossing powder sticking. So where the image is raised upwards, there won't be any embossing powder. I finished the card with a hello die by Alter New and the sentiment is from the same needlework motifs stamp set also by Alter New. For this next technique, I'm going to call it triple embossing because we're going to do heat embossing twice on top of the dry embossing. I'm using grey cardstock from the Smoke and Mirrors set by Catherine Pooler and I'm using a Tim Holtz embossing folder and running it through my die cutting machine. I've added embossing ink in the exact same way as you saw me do before and I'm heat embossing with Wow embossing powder singing in the rain, which is a really nice clear sparkly embossing powder. And you'll see that it collects in the depressions within the flower shapes on the cardstock. Now you could just leave it at that, it looks really pretty, but we're going to add a third embossing. We're going to run the Versamark ink directly over the cardstock itself. Again, you want to be try and be gentle here, 
Don't push it down because it will collect within the depressions that we've already heat embossed. I'm then going to add Wow Embossing Powder in Frost over the top, which is a opaque blue colour, and we're going to heat emboss it. Obviously you can see it did collect in some of the areas that already heat embossed, and whilst this does give more of a distressed look because you're going to struggle to get it exactly perfect, uh, you can remove any excess with a paintbrush. I trimmed down the panel, mounted it on a white card base again. This Hello dies by Catherine Pooler Designs, and the sentiment is again from the Altenew Needlework Motifs stamp set. For my final card, we're going to use the same technique we've used before, which is adding the Versamark ink directly to the uh, embossing folder. I'm heat embossing this time in Altenew Copper on white cardstock. This is just plain white cardstock. I think it's Catherine Pooler Designs again, premium white. And you get a nice copper, shimmery, embossed look. Again, you could totally leave it like this and it makes a great background like we did with the black and silver. But this time I'm going to go direct to paper with some ink. So I'm using Flirty Fuchsia, which is Catherine Pooler ink. And I'm liberally applying it directly over the cardstock. Just swiping it across. I've got a nice juicy ink pad here. Catherine Pooler inks are really good for this, actually. And I'm then adding Royal Treatment, which is a darker purple, and you get a nice ombre effect. And I'm just rubbing a dry baby wipe over the top to remove any excess ink that was on top of the embossing powder. I finished it with a Thanks Die by Catherine Pooler Designs, and the sentiment is from the For Everything stamp set by Catherine Pooler. And that finishes all of the cards. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe to my channel, and there's also a couple of other videos you may want to check out here. Remember, you've got till November the 7th to leave comments. The next stop on the hop for Save the Crafty YouTuber is in the video description below. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.